Well, a very good evening uh, to you on lockdown day 127 here in South Africa. You're watching the full view on the SABC News Channel. I'm Chris Alder Lewis. So tonight we unpack uh, the crime statistics released today. We'll be joined by the Institute for Security Studies uh, and the National Police Commissioner, General Kesha Sitole. Also, COVID-19 treatment trials begin in South Africa. We'll look at that and much more. But first, your headlines. More than 21,000 people killed in the last financial year as the latest crime stats show an increase in murders and sexual offences. And as the sale of illicit cigarettes saw, the tobacco industry could shed up to a quarter of a million jobs because of the lockdown ban. And attorneys hired by ex-police minister Nati Ntleko testify about the report that resulted in the suspension of the then iPad boss, Robert McBride. Rolene Strauss, Demi Linel Peters and now Sozibi Nitunzi. In recent years, South Africa's had a good run in international pageants, but some say there's just something a little more special about Zozi. Good evening, it's 8 o'clock. I'm Tony Ndoro live from Johannesburg and in your top stories for this evening. The lockdown is coming. A 72-hour action plan to arrest those responsible for murdering 13 people in Cape Town this past weekend. It's not next year. August, we will be back. And de a deadline has been set for whether or not to scrap the e-toll system. Outrage and frustration as people queue for hours and wait for months for documentation at the Umgeni Home Affairs Office in Durban. Well, thanks, guys. Now, a lockdown is being considered following a bloody weekend in Philippi, Cape Town. But Police Minister Begzele says there will be no shoot to kill. Six women were gunned down in the area on Friday night, bringing the death toll to 11 for the weekend. Begzele is promising widespread reform, but says residents must help expose the criminals. Cessation of movement in Isli, Nairobi County and Old Town, Mombasa County. As COVID-19 cases in the country rise to 582, this is after 47 new cases were confirmed in the last 24 hours. Good evening, welcome to Channel 1 News Hour. For now, let's take a look at the highlights. shall be cessation of movement in and out of Isli area of Nairobi with effect from today, the 6th of May 2020, at 7 p.m. for the next 15 days. There shall be cessation of movement in the area known as Old Town in Mombasa with effect from today, the 6th of May at 7 p.m., for the next 15 days. Government tightens anti-COVID-19 measures as positive cases surge to 582. Devastation across the country as floods continue to wreak havoc across the country. Concern over the fate of those evicted from Karyobangi sewage estate in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic.
Good evening. Welcome to the broadcast. My name is Jackie Wamburu. Our sign language interpreter this evening is Lensa Odingo. Now, to kick us off, the government has put two estates where coronavirus cases have spiked under lockdown. Effective Wednesday night, there will be no movement in and out of Isle Estate in Nairobi and Old Town in Mombasa for the next two weeks as the two lo localities have become epicenters of community spread. Besides of this ban, in movement, markets and eateries in the two estates will remain closed. The directive was issued as the country recorded 47 new cases in 24 hours, stretching the infections tally to 582 amid revelations that two more people succumbed to the deadly contagion. Tonight, still no way forward on the county revenue sharing formula. The Kenyan senators for a record seventh time failed to find common ground, adjourning debate once again to allow senators more time to consult. Curiously, those who shot down minority leader James Orengo's motion to adjourn last week were the ones leading today's similar motion. Are political interests getting in the way of public interest? The Senate stalemate leaving the country in limbo once again with a looming cash crunch in the counties. Kenyans will have to wait for another week to know how their devolved units will share the 316 billion shillings this financial year. I am Ben Kitili live at the KTN News Center in Nairobi. KTN Prime begins right now. Abstentions 1, nays 26, ayes 34. The, the ayes have it. Tonight, Senator John's County's revenue sharing formula debate for a record seventh time. If we don't get monies to counties, this issue you are raising of county preparedness is a, is a moot point. A looming cash crunch in the counties as governors find themselves between a rock and a hard place. Plus, how safe is breastfeeding with COVID-19? We bring you the story of a nursing mother who tested positive for the virus while pregnant. And two explosions rocked Beirut ahead of the verdict in a trial over the killing of former Prime Minister. Welcome to the broadcast. Our sign language interpreter tonight is Maresha Owiti. Horrific breaking news tonight. TV tonight. Hello and welcome to the broadcast. As always, we have plenty lined up for you tonight, but first, take a look at the growing coronavirus cases. Globally, the number of infections is at over 18.3 million, while the death toll is at 694,000. Over 11.5 million people have recovered. In Africa, over 964,000 people have been infected, while over 20,000 have died. The recoveries are at 618,000. And in the US, over 4.8 million people have COVID-19 and over 158,000 have died from it. Kenya's numbers continue to soar as well. We'll break it down after the highlights. Tonight, lost in the front line. She has left behind her less than a week old infant. COVID-19 claims a caregiver and now health workers are worried sick. Going forward, we will not work with any substandard PPEs. Also tonight, a formula to divide county revenue splits the country. The equitable share allocation to county governments for the fiscal year 2020-21 remained at the same level this particular factor makes cushioning the losing counties pra impractical. And the last-ditch efforts to unlock the stalemate in the Senate ahead of Tuesday's session. Plus, empty containers. Na watoto ni wakusahau haraka, sababu watoto wanapenda kucheza. The school year may be a waste, but some learners are making haste. 
catching up with schoolwork on a holiday month. And also tonight. The country's growing problem now that schools are still out. NTV Tonight with Smriti Vidyarthi. David Agondor is our sign language interpreter tonight. To our top story, and healthcare workers in Homa Bay County have downed their tools beginning today following a series of complaints regarding unpaid dues and provision of substandard personal protective equipment by the county government. The recent death of a health worker has made things worse. Naoma Sampao has more. <laughs> Nayamila Mohammed. Kujambo mcheza majini usiku wa Jumatano. Karibu katika taarifa za mipashe lakini kwanza tuangalie leo. We have said it for a long time. We have told people that they will take the disease to their parents. We want them not to do it. Watu 20 wa familia moja waambukizwa virusi vya corona baada ya kutangamana. After that 10 days plus 3 days without any symptoms no fever you don't need a retest. Hakuna kupimwa tena virusi vya corona baada ya siku 14 ikiwa haunyeshi dalili za ugonjwa huo. Shemeji adaiwa kuwalipa halifu shilingi 1500 kumuua mwanzake huko kisi. Let's be fair to the members who served in this parliament. Wabunge wataka kupata malipo ya uzeni. Wazamani wakiidhinishwa shilingi 100 kila mwezi. Ananisaidia kwa lugha ishara ni Yula Nzale. Karibu. Familia ya wakili wanakuru Gordon Ogola imekanusha madai kuwa watu 48 katika familia hiyo waliambukizwa ugonjwa wa COVID-19. Kwa mujibu wa wakili huyo ni watu wa sozidi 20 peke ambao wanaugua ugonjwa huo katika familia yake. Na kama anavyotuarifu Raquel Mwigai, ndugu ya wakili huyo ambaye alifariki mapema wiki hii kutokana na COVID-19, amezikwa hii leo katika kijiji cha Ogwevi, kaunti ya Migori. Higher institutions reopening postponed until January 2021, with the Ministry of Education set to roll out a community-based learning approach for pupils. Government to restrict entry of international flights from countries not heeding to COVID-19 containment measures, with only 11 countries allowed to fly in. Tazol on revenue allocation formula far from over with opposing leaders vowing to shoot down new amendments. And still ahead, 70% of women and girls accounting for global human trafficking statistics with school-going children in Kenya at a higher risk. Welcome to the live broadcast. Our sign interpreter is Walter Asewe. University and college students across the country will remain closed till January 2021. This is according to Education Cabinet Secretary Professor George Magoha, who noted that the institution of higher education are not well prepared to handle the safety guidelines needed to curb the spread of COVID-19. Pag, com nova estrutura. A empresa passa a ser detida por três acionistas. Burladores de terreno atacam em Viena. As vítimas denunciam e a administração fala em crime organizado. Estes são os novos autocarros que vão operar a partir de Viena. Mais manifestações contra o racismo, desta vez na Tunísia.
É segunda-feira, 20 de julho. Bem-vindos às notícias. A TAG foi transformada em sociedade anónima de capitais maioritariamente públicos, com o estatuto de a empresa de domínio público. Esta nova realidade surge por via do decreto presidencial número 186, barra 20, de 17 de julho, do titular do Poder Executivo, e que transforma a TAG em sociedade composta por três acionistas, sendo que o Estado continua a ser o maioritário de forma indireta. O país registra um novo recorde de infecções num só dia. Nas últimas 24 horas foram descobertos mais 17 casos positivos de Covid-19. Vai poder ver neste jornal. Agora o Jornal do Zimbo, com David Diogo. Boa noite. Angola registrou nas últimas 24 horas 17 novos casos de contaminação pela Covid-19. Esta é a primeira vez que o país anuncia um número tão elevado de infecções desde que a pandemia chegou a Angola. O país atinge assim uma cifra acima dos 100 ou das 100 infecções, prefazendo um total de 113 casos confirmados, 4 óbitos e 40 recuperações. A Ministra da Saúde informou também que nas últimas 24 horas foram recuperados mais dois pacientes. President Bohamba urges Namibian business people to complement government efforts in its quest to take services closer to the people. The SADC Ministerial Task Force on Regional Economic Integration adopts a memorandum of understanding on interregional cooperation. In Namibia replaces its 19-seater Beechcraft with a 37-seater uh, a jet for use on domestic flights. And further afield, riot police deployed to the center of the Algerian capital, Algiers, ahead of a planned anti government rally. Peleka askari wa kulinda amani nchini Libya ili kuinusuru nchi hiyo na vita. Na katika michezo na burudani, Taifa Stars kupata wapinzani wake kesho kufuzu kwa kombe la dunia. Wasomaji wako siku huu ni Asha Haji na Mbozi Katala. Na habari za usiku mtazamaji wa TBC1 karibu katika habari iliyo sheheni habari za kitaifa mataifa mbalimbali uchumi na biashara bila kusahau michezo na burudani utakuwa na mimbozi katala sambamba nikiwa na ashahaji bila kusahau protas Mwalongo. Naam, na mtazamaji wa TBC1 pia unaweza kufuatilia taarifa hii ya habari kupitia mitandao yetu ya kijamii TBC Habari pamoja na a Facebook. Na tuanze taarifa hii ya habari kwa kuangazia e, zoe zili la usajili wa laini za e, simu. Watu wameanza kufanya kama biashara kati ni kitu ambacho mm. ni huruma ya bure. Mafuta ya petroli ya dimika mkoani mara na kusababisha na ulikupanda. Jiwe lingine la kilo sita za madini ya Tanzanite lenye thamani ya shilingi bilioni nne la patikana manyara. Na katika michezo kikosi cha Simba chapata mapokezi ya kishindo Dar es Salaam baada ya kutoa ubingwa ubingwa wa kombe la TFF.
Habari za usiku na zamaji wetu popote pale mlipo. Hii ni taarifa ya habari kutoka hapa ITV Msomaji ni mimi Juliet Robert. Karibuni. Watumiaji wa vyombo vya moto manispaa ya Musoma mkoa ni Mara wamelalamikia ukosefu wa mafuta ya petroli na kupanda kwa bei ya mafuta kutoka shilingi 1600 hadi shilingi 3000 hali ambayo imesababisha adha ya usafiri na kupanda kwa nauli huku watumiaji wa vyombo hivyo wakiomba serikali kuingilia kati swala hilo kutoka mara Jacqueline Masinga na taarifa zaidi Bonsoir à tous à la une du journal de 20h sur la radio télévision nationale qui relève ses assurances du vice-premier ministre, premier ministre du budget, Jean-Baudouin Mayomambeki, au médecin qui s'interroge sur la prime des risques. La question sera résolue dans les prévisions budgétaires du troisième trimestre et le contenu de la réunion dans les bons syndicats des médecins dans ces journaux.